Now let us quickly look at what are the advantages of pre stressed concrete over reinforced concrete. And uh, you can see uh, here in these two examples what we are seeing one is a reinforced concrete, another one is a pre stressed concrete. Now, now that we have seen that uh, we, you are, um, if your depth is usually governed by deflection requirement, now by applying pre stress. I can have a more cracking load, right. So, for the same load levels, okay, for the same load levels, if my deflection is governing the design, which is usually the case for long span elements, then the depth that, okay, this is D1, okay, the depth that is required D1 will be much less than the depth that is required for RC if I do not apply pre stress. That means for a particular span, by using pre stress, my depth requirements will come down significantly. Okay. So, uh, that is an advantage. Okay. So, that is the reason when we do the design, allowable, allowable, allowable L by D ratios are higher for or higher for pre stress concrete than this. Okay. And the second case, okay. Let us say if I am keeping the uh, uh, depth the same, in this case you see this is also D and this is also D. If same depth is there for the same span, right. Now, pre stress concrete because my allowable uh, typically deflections are governed by uh, again some L by 250 or some numbers depending upon what L uh, to the span. Then this member, pre stress member can take much higher load than a same reinforced concrete member. So, for the same span, for the same load, depth requirement in pre stress will be much lesser. Now, for the same span, for the same depth, the load, the allowable load uh, or I can allow more loads to be applied to the pre stress concrete member. because it is going to crack at a much higher uh, load that like what we have seen in the previous case. Okay, the next case is uh, the pre stress concrete uh, as we have uh, seen in the previous examples also can be designed uh, without any tensile stresses under service loads. Okay. So, this is a big advantage. Why? Because in typically in reinforced concrete, they are allowed to crack under service loads. If I want to limit this crack width, if I want to limit this cracks, I need to put more steel. Okay. But with pre stress uh, under service loads, you do not get any cracks because you are, you are always the service load, the W, this W will make sure that it is always less than W cracking. So, your entire cross section will be effective and it will not be cracked. Okay. So, that is a big advantage. So, because of that what will happen? Now, there is no crack then uh, it is a bad performance is better. Again as I said depth is going to be less D1 is less than D. Now, the second case is because you can see the crack I will not have even let us say we have three types of design type 1, type 2 and type 3. In all three of them, in type 3 we allow cracks, but again the crack widths will be limited. Even in a type 3 design, which we will discuss in flexural design when we come to that, I will have the crack widths will be limited. So, you will have only few cracked surface on the bottom. Now, fewer the crack surface, you are creating, there, there is no passage for the water, moisture, chlorides and sulphates to enter into the concrete and activate the disintegration mechanism. So, this is a very big advantage when you design a pre stress concrete system. Typically, they are designed to be uncracked under service loads. Okay. This is a very big advantage. So, you need to, you will end up with lesser maintenance compared to steel and regular RC bridges. Okay. Now, another important uh, uh, application that what we are seeing here is uh, as we have explained, post tension pre stress members are suitable for long spans with variable cross sections. Uh, you know, I can also change the cross section as I 
Gola. For example, let's say as, as you go to the mid span, uh, even you have seen in the previous pictures of uh, balanced cantilever construction, the thickness of the element will come down as I move to the mid span location, right? So that will lead to overall economy in construction. Now, I can also do a partially pre-stressed system. What is the meaning of a partially pre-stressed system, right? That partially pre-stressed means you can allow to have cracks, okay? And also, in addition to the pre-stressing reinforcement, I can also have normal reinforcing steel to meet the strength demand. I designed the pre-stressing for serviceability, but if I want more ultimate strength, I can also have additional normal steel that can be added to the system for uh, helping with the design requirements, okay. And uh, the moment you go, as we have, again, we have dis described this in the previous slide also, this is a case of a continuous system and you can see here, one is the depth requirement will be less, right. And now, my L by D ratios are higher for priestess, so actually I can get rid of this supports. So, you see the big benefit that we get out of priestess is if I can remove the, uh, go for a longer span, then the time required to create foundations and casting the pier, you know, the time, we save a lot of material as well as a lot of time, right. So, this is a very big advantage. The moment you, you can go for longer span, you also speed up the construction and you reduce the construction time drastically. This is a very big advantage of again priestess. Now again these are some advantages. The priestess members are shallower in depth than their reinforced concrete counterparts for the same span and loading conditions which we have seen. For larger span, priestess concrete becomes mandatory because you know uh, typically you know you cannot build arch type bridges because the spans will be less. The moment you want to have long span, it is it becomes uh, imperative to go for uh, priestess concrete system. And uh, uh, and arches also they are expensive and sometimes they do not perform well if you are not careful due to severe long term shrinkage and creep are they as they undergo. And very large spans such as segmental bridges, cable, uh, cable state bridges can only be constructed with the help of priestessing. Okay. Now again I have told you this uh, AL by D ratios, okay, right span to depth ratio. So, you can see these are the typical span to depth ratio that is coming from PTI design manual, post tensioning institute design manual. For one way solid slabs, depending upon whether I have a single span, simple span or continuous spans, whether you are doing a floor element or a roof element, typically roof element will have higher L by D ratios. The reason is the load requirements will be less, okay. The load requirements for a roof will be less. So, that is the reason if you see continuous span for one way solid slab, L by H is higher for a roof than the floor, okay. So, like that if you see for two way slabs also you can go as high as 40 and for beams you can go L by H ratios of 35 for, uh, uh, for continuous spans and for simple spans you can go as high as 26 or so. And for one way joist, this number for roof is 42 and 32. So, what, what we can tell is typically for the same system, if I am doing it with reinforced concrete, my allowable L by D ratios will be typically 20 to 30 percentage lesser than the what I do with priestess. So, that means, uh, you know, I can, I can go for longer spans for the same depth for variety of elements like this, one-way slabs, two-way slabs, two-way waffle slab, beams, one-way joists, for all the elements, if I apply priestess for the same depth compared to RC, I can go for longer span. This is a very big advantage and also I can design it to be crack free under service loads. This is a big advantage. Now let us quickly go through some of the applications. So this is a typical external segmental construction of a box girder. You can see these elements are all outside, I mean they are within the cross section, but they are not within the concrete. That is why it is called external post tension box girder. And we can also have innovate lot of other ways of doing it also. For example, you see here you have uh, bottom flange, concrete flange, top concrete flange. I can also connect these two things with the corrugated steel webs. Then I can run the cables internally within the flanges 
I can also put some additional cables which are outside the flanges, right? Like what we have here, okay? These elements are all actually within the cross section, but they are not within the concrete. That's why it's called external uh, pre stressing. With this, we can again do a very efficient and economical design, okay? And this is again very aesthetically pleasing designs can be uh, designed and constructed. Uh, this is a Jadukata bridge in Meghalaya. Is one of the longest cantilever pre-stress concrete bridge span in India. The span is about 145 meter, and pre-stressing was chosen mainly for durability to account for heavy monsoon in this area. Okay, uh, in Meghalaya, you know, it, it receives highest amount of rainfall, and if you want to design a crack-free element for such a long span, pre-stressing is the only way to go for. And this is again very interesting application of a raft slab where we apply PT, post tensioning ducts, we put it and then we cast concrete and then we do the stressing, okay. You can see these all these white elements are, uh, these are basically PT ducts, these are all PT ducts. And then we run the cable and then we stress them, uh, again what is post tensioning, pre tensioning, we will discuss it in the next uh, uh, module. And this is another interesting applications for a cylindrical tank like this, uh, typically for such uh, tank type structures, the main static forces uh, will be in the horizontal direction, uh, will be in the cylindrical bund wall that what you are talking about. They will be subjected to hoop tensile stresses because of the hydrostatic pressure that is coming. Uh, that uh, to resist that, we apply uh, cables in the circular direction like this and then we also sometimes undergo vertical pre stressing like this, okay. So, horizontal tendons will typically follow the curvature of the wall and vertical tendons are straight, they are on the CG of the wall. Uh, basically, they are done to improve the leak tightness by applying pre-compression in the vertical direction. The next one is a very, again, uh, very important for a containment structure. Again, this is a picture of a Kaiga atomic power station and you can see this was again built by Larsen and Tubro and it is a circularly pre-stressed containment structure just like the previous one that we talked about. Again, the roof also can be constructed uh, using post-tensioning system which are embedded within the concrete and then they can be stressed at a later point of time. And this is again as we have discussed previously, uh, aqueduct, uh, pre-stressed aqueduct can be constructed again because it runs water and we do not want to have cracks. Again, if you have crack and then moisture, then the corrosion will start. So, pre-stressing helps you to have a crack-free uh, water aqueduct, water carrying aqueduct. So, you can see that such kind of long aqueducts can be constructed using pre-stressing. Okay. So, with this, we will uh, summarize what we have learnt in this first part of this first module. We have talked about basic concepts of pre-stress concrete what is pre-stressing, why do we need to do pre-stressing and we also talked about history of pre-stress concrete both uh, from the international point of view as well as from Indian point of view and then we also discussed why do we need to go for pre-stressing. We took three uh, basic simple examples of a plain concrete beam uh, without pre-stressing, plain concrete beam with concentric pre-stressing and then plain concrete beam with eccentric pre-stressing. We, we saw that the load a carrying capacity at cracking uh, to crack the element was much higher when you go for an eccentric pre-stressing. Again, we talked about advantages of pre-stressing over reinforced concrete. The moment you want to go for long span and crack free element, pre-stressing is the way to go and very variety of applications of pre-stressing was also discussed. Uh, with that, I think uh, thank you for your attentions. We will continue in the next parts of the module. Thank you.